Yeah, I'm sure he's got something to tell you. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking to Ian. That's oh, I, what I like about Ian, he's got a little bit of the devil in him. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I think I knew that. Like he, he's um, he's not bothered about ruffling some feathers, is he? No. We're talking to Ian Bowles. Oh yes, today, so, by the way. <laughs> once again, not telling anyone what's going on. Yeah. Uh, Ian Bowles, tell him why we're talking to Ian. We like him, really like him. And well, one of the many things he's done is uh, he's he was warm up for Deal or No Deal. <laughs> I love how specific the reason is. We <laughs> got. Because he he's done so much stuff, but we want him on to talk yeah, about yeah. Noel Edmonds. <laughs> What's Noel yeah. like? Yeah. Um, uh, on the Richard Herring podcast, I think he gets heckled at the Leicester Square Theatre. He gets heckled and the whole interview just derails and oh, Ian no. just focuses on the heckler for like 20 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think the first time I met him, I did a gig in Burgess Hill, and um, yeah. it, it's, it was in. The, I think it was Burgess Hill. It was definitely around there, and it was in this theatre that was. You had to go through a library to get into it. It's really weird, but they did their first night the month before, and it, it was like six hundred seater theatre, and they'd sold it out. And then the oh, fo- Burgess Hill, yeah, like it's a big wow. theatre, and like maybe 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 like four hundred or something. And um, and then the following month, I did it with Ian and. What was the else. night? I don't know who ran it. I think I can't remember. What, would, it, would it fill out? Well, this is what happened. The first the first month they were doing it monthly. The first month it sold out. They like went round the town and sort of uh, promoting pubs and giving it away tickets in the pub quizzes and all this sort of stuff. And then the following month, it didn't do anything. They just sort of all, oh, that's enough now. We can, it'll just sell out yeah. every month. And so no one was there when we turned up. Little did they know the public were also <laughs> thinking that's enough now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm, maybe, Don't want this every month. Well, Stand up's awful. And um, they um, they basically, so we sat there, met Ian, and Ed Gamble's with him, just there watching. Oh, Ian's here. And uh, I'll see if he remembers this. And there was no one. And what I liked about Ian straight away is he was convincing the promoter straight away that we should pull it. Hello, mate. (laughs) (laughs) I was just talking about... Hello, mate. How are you? It sounded right. Whatever you were saying sounded right, Joe. Do you remember a gig where we met in... I think it was like Burgess Hill or somewhere, and it was like a theatre behind a library... And it, mm. it was really, it was it was quite big and they'd sold no tickets. And I walked in, <laughs> or oh, they'd sold like four tickets and you were telling the promoter to pull it. And I was just well, watching should. you Definitely going, should. I like this guy. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and you were going, and you were being really persistent going, no, this is not, this will not work. There's no point in us doing it. And the oh, guy was on. like, kind yeah. of trying to convince you to do it and you were going yeah and you were, you were like Richard Hammond at the back yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I was going Not yeah 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 <laughs> how, how, could, how could you I mean it, do, it does that does start I don't gig it I don't do stand up anymore but that yeah. like do you miss uh, it hello Ian by uh, the way hi mate you're man yeah you alright yeah I'm like I, I'm cross with you both but why other, this stupid hour I went to bed at four o'clock oh yeah I know. you went to bed at four <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I work. the problem, I'm, mate, you lunatic. <laughs> I think I am, you know, but I work through the night. I think I do that do because... You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't... because I mean, It's because I can only properly concentrate when I know nobody can message me. Or call like me. at three in the morning. Oh, my God. What's it like? Yeah, yeah. Is it dark? <laughs> <laughs> What's it like? I got to bed at <laughs> ten. <laughs> when I went to bed, it was getting. It, it, no, it was actually. I think properly lights when I went to bed. Why have you agreed to do this then? You've only been in bed like five hours. Since well, I don't. I, I, I live like in in a house, an isolated house in the middle of nowhere, so I very rarely get to speak to people. <laughs> so, where are you? What in the country? Yeah, yeah. Um, Warwickshire. Didn't you used right. to be Welling Garden City? Do I know? Why do I know? I've been, that? All, I've been all over the place. I've, I'm, go back to that gig thing. Yeah. Go back to that first off. Yeah. 
Because I think when you said that, when I when I sort of half heard what you said about when I came into the conversation, I I, I, I had a quite a a reaction to that, thinking oh, really? about those situations. So when you said about do I miss gigs, that like not in not on any level. Do you really? Because you were obviously good you and doing really? well, and then you just went no, no more. Um, well, I think that's because I had other irons in the fire, really. And, and because I always wanted to do kind of independent stuff that I was like, that I could guide myself and I, I never liked working for other people. That's why it's uh, an interesting thing to chat about what you want to talk about today. Because oh, I think great. that was potentially the epitome of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What I despise the most oh, about... Oh, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, 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 okay, so here's a, a an interesting question then for you, Joe. Yeah. Um. So you've got on to great success. Not so much, David. <laughs> but... <laughs> well, it's, it depends how you sort of define <laughs> oh, success. No, it, 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 no, it absolutely does, though, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It's one of them, though, isn't it? I do actually agree with that, David. It's uh, that's completely right. <laughs> oh God, sorry, um, Joe. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, had, I had almost three seconds of joy then, and David whipped it away as per. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, I wasn't. I, honestly, that's not at all what I meant. That's come out wrong. If that's come I know, out right, that's um, what I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With one hand, he giveth. <laughs> Get him up. Get him up after four hours sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's absolutely no, he, he won't mentally batter us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come out of the way at this with no confidence. I know it. No, I'm asking, this is a really serious question. Oh, no. Not serious, but, you know, this is a genuine question. Um, So so when, that, that's because they, most of the gigs that I did were like that. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I did tours and things where people came to see you and it was brilliant. But when you're just, you know, going all around the country, turning up at places with no knowledge at all as to how many people you're going to turn up to, what sort of dicks they're going to be when you get there, if they're going to be dicks indeed, if they're going to be lovely, you know, it's so, it, such a stressful thing to be driving all that way. So if you consistently turn up to places where people are coming for you and where, you know, where it's a, a you know, short of one idiot in the audience ruin it for everyone it should be lovely. Yeah. It's, it's, I didn't really experience that too much in, in my stand-up career. It's, no. It's different completely, isn't it? Because, like, when you've got no profile, you go round, and as you say, you don't know what you're walking into. And it's to the point where you go, this, this, is, this is impossible. I don't know how, how, you know, like club circuit comedians, they can just go, yeah. like, really good ones, just go everywhere. I found out very quickly that I couldn't do that. I just, right. I just couldn't. It was so, I was like, I could sense it straight. I know David, you would have been the same, just sense it going, no, this lot are going to hate me. And there's nothing, because I, I was talking about this quite a lot of people, <laughs> comedians sort of talking about how they would sort of shift gears. I never knew what that meant. Yeah. Like the sort of audience would be like this, so they'd go off a different way. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> they know what they mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you just have to go, well, I'm going to do this, and there's a massive chance you can't, you're not going to like it. And it was, it was yeah. terrible. It was like but heartbreaking. You must have played some big rooms, though, Ian, surely. No, I have. Like, I don't want to sort of portray myself as, God, I nearly said a name, but, but as, you know, <laughs> somebody that wasn't doing well at all. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, like I, I did, and I and I because I did TV warm stuff quite a lot as well. Yeah, and I did you know I was in a, a triple act first, and a double act as well, and all that. Stuff. So I had experience of going places where there were a fair chunk of people that wanted to see you. Yeah, you definitely. But did. but your day to day gigging mm. it was it's the you know it's the same job in it. That's I remember Al Murray saying that to me ages ago like, about it's the same job no matter what you're playing, no matter how which entitlement you have you know, in, in terms of like your fan base and all that, or how many people have come to see you. It's ultimately the same job. So I had same job without the goodwill at the beginning of it as well. Yeah. The goodwill, yeah, so, the goodwill is the difference, isn't it? I mean, Joe, if yeah. you toured, what size venues are we talking? I'd say Wembley. No, come on. Uh, <laughs> what size venues are we talking? What would you say? Hey, we got to think about the venues now. 
What size are we yeah. talking? <laughs> There's no way I can come out with this not looking like an arsehole, is there? No, <laughs> well, I am interested. So I like the idea of you got a 50 date tour, you go, I'm heading up there. There's 800 people waiting for me. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. That's exactly how I think as well. There's 800 people waiting for moi. <laughs> 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 You've got to be really careful because you could do a tour where you dramatically overestimate how many yeah. people. Oh are God! And see. I remember seeing a comic. Um, it was a character comedian at, uh, at Brom Bromsgrove Atrix, I think it was. Whatever that theatre is called. How big is that? It was too big for him. <laughs> <laughs> and he was it was, it was honestly it was it was quite a heartbreaking night because he was you sort of got the sense that he defeated himself before he walked onto the stage anyway right and also he walked onto the stage and he plowed it i found it very very funny i was laughing, laughing Ian, sorry this could easily be the night you came to watch me <laughs> but i don't know if this is having a little dig at me here <laughs> oh. <laughs> and after this show i'm sorry about the side his car had broken down and it was weird. He had, a, he had a little bit of like profile and stuff. This acts, but I got outside afterwards, and he was just stood by this battered car. It's fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> just going. Your car won't start. <laughs> okay. One of the <laughs> things I've ever seen in my life. Oh, like, you! Oh, you like devil! Funny people <laughs> in a two hundred seater. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, you little devil! Is it you, David? Yes. <laughs> 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 fucking hell. Fucking right, hell, you, that's amazing. I was it's like, a fantastic. <laughs> hang on, I was like, character comedian. I'll tell you who I thought of immediately. Thought of an Avalon act, thinking, oh yeah, but he big, put one big. So did I. I know, I know. It turned out it was me. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, did you think of a man? That's interesting. Who did you think of a man? I, still, oh, I, don't want, I don't want to mention Well, that, what though. usually happens in this here, we, we'll let's start on WhatsApp and all the things we'll we can't actually. Yeah, we can't all right, write. yeah. Because I'll have no problem saying it, me. No, I know you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, that's what we've spoken about already. <laughs> <laughs> so, have I told you this, Joe? I, first night of my tour, I, I sort of mentioned it yesterday, Sean. Two, it was about a two hundred seater, like forty people turned up. Ian, Ian came. My, it was the last night of the tour, wasn't it? First. Oh, was it first that? Yeah. Did you carry on? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, this interview is going the way I'd hoped. <laughs> Less on me. No, it was the last night you saw. No, it's the first. <laughs> oh, no, you had an air about you that that was it then for you, that you were never going to be stand up ever oh, again. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but have I, I must have told you this, Joe. I can't so, remember. <laughs> I remember you saying Ian said, had I was been defeated to your gig. By What's that? I remember you saying Ian had been to a gig. I can't remember much else about it. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't want to be there. Not a lot of people wanted to be there. <laughs> and uh, I finished the finished the gig so the first time i was doing a tour and i was got sort of semi i was like oh what's this gonna be like by the hour it was brilliant <laughs> by the way yeah no, but by the way it was brilliant yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> now what's he gonna say no it was <laughs> no, 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 no but i sincerely yeah. there's a misconception about me that i'm this sort of dick and i'm not at all I'm, I'm, i don't think you are I, a dick i'm quite a nice boy i think but, you are a nice boy oh well thank you man <laughs> well i'll tell you why he is boy. joe I went out to the car park. My mum gave me her uh, Volkswagen that Polo. That I remember, I think. I got in the car, sort of said goodbye to Ian, I think. I got in the car, I wouldn't start. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, no. I, I was in, uh, where was I? In the Midlands or something? Anyways, where, sort of where you live. No, it was, no, it was a fair, like, hour, hour from mine. Okay. <laughs> I, the car wouldn't I'd start. I'd driven all that way. <laughs> <laughs> in a car that works. The car wouldn't start. I had all these props. I was like, oh, no, fucking hell. I got the guy out, the RAC or whatever. He had a look. Oh, nothing to do with this, mate. Blah, blah, blah. It was like 300 quid. To oh, brilliant. So I've earned about 120 quid. I've got to pay him 300 quid to have it towed back. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't miss out the bit that you stayed in character the whole time. No, I didn't. So don't miss that. I've got video footage that shows that you were speaking. No, you know I did. Oh dear. As no, as I did. Little Achilles heel coming up for David. No, no, no. I'm not having that. I'll send you the footage. You can send it. You had a. You, had a you lime know what green you're wig on. doing here. <laughs> you did. You had a lime green wig on. You were sat in the car where the man was about to say your car was a complete write-off, and you still <laughs> wouldn't let it go. <laughs> it's like, what? It was like it was like that bit in Blair. No, no I was making a little film. 
<laughs> I was making a film. And so I was, I was in and out of character like the wind. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I couldn't, I was like, well, I, I don't know what to do. I'm stuck in wherever I am in the Midlands. Ian drove me home. What? All the way home? Three hour drive. Blimey, Riley. I th- oh, honestly, I think I arrived home at like half one. You would have got home at four in the morning. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that, my that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. That's what we're dealing with, though. One no, but that's guys. not... One I, of the good guys. I, I still don't consider that to be that big a deal. I know what you mean, but I... I no, I don't. I really don't. That's Well, I do. Yeah, I do. Mate, that's you cool. were in a hopeless situation that night. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I don't mean just career-wise. I mean... <laughs> not just career-wise, did you say? <laughs> uh, honestly, well, I won't forget that. Okay, well... You only yeah, just remembered it then, though, to be fair. True. Me? <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, we got you on yeah. <laughs> to yeah. chat Deal or No Deal, because I love that show, okay. and I love Noel. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... Are you, are you, is this true now? What yeah. You, you do love... You love that show, and you love Noel. Yeah, me and Naomi used to get home and just, would, would we record it or we'd watch it every evening? Yeah. And, um, but what I also like about these shows or just any show I, I like is finding out how big the room is, what's in the boxes, <laughs> <laughs> what the change rooms are like. Is that what uh, you like? Did you like when you watched it? Did you like thinking, I wonder what's in the box? That's <laughs> <laughs> it. And think, oh, I wonder what. I wonder what amount of money is in that box. Yeah, I, wonder. I, I was just want to know everything about deal or no deal. Yeah. Joe, are you, are you I, interested? I've just realised that I've just realised I've done it. I've just remembered I've done it. <laughs> so can I go to bed? <laughs> I've literally just gone. I fucking done it. I just remembered. Literally just remembered on my life. I went, <laughs> I fucking done it. I was like, what's this ring a bell? Because um, we did, we did the countdown version or whatever. Oh, so you've done it. Well, yeah. Well, I think yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lovely to see you in. You yeah, know, it's it's been a pleasure. It's been like nice. <laughs> now I don't need to worry about any legal. No, but it wasn't the same. Like I did, I did, I did a stupid bit on it. I didn't really, but I don't know how. It yeah, worked. but you've been in the studio. I where have been in. Ian. It's because it's in Bristol, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Can it, you tell me everything about it? Where it is. I forget what time to get there. How many shows? Carriage Works, is it called, or something like that? Yeah, is something it, like that. And or it's something factory. Something like oh, that. factory, something factory. Is it? Or not chocolate factory? No, it, like, no, it might be chocolate factory. Like like old- oh, yeah, that rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. Or is, that, that's, that's, is it not the one in Manchester? Don't know. But you said something factory. Yeah, and um, okay. yeah, but I don't, I didn't really. I because for me, I I'm sort of fascinated in what's it like to do warm up for a show like that because I don't know what a like, daytime audience is like but I imagine it's not like a comedy club where it won't like it, it certainly won't like uh, necessarily other I don't think any two shows really are, are exactly the same but I think that sitcoms certainly there is a a mood and a tone to it to be in the one at a sitcom and then you get I think because of the ones that I used to do like I, I did Red Dwarf and things like that. So they, they were sort of a law unto themselves as well because they were, you know, very specific audiences that you kind of got integrated with over time. Right. Um, and and that, that was a very, uh, without being too much of a wanker about it, that felt very much like a family sort of thing. You felt like you were part of something right. at Red Dwarf. Whereas. Uh, <laughs> no, but no, but, but daytime stuff. So my, I, I did a warm, my first ever warm up was Nigella Lawson's show. I th- I'm sure it was live where she uh, used to do a, a show from I think 12 till one or something. Like that. And uh, that was, that was a, the, the only, the, the only thing that's anywhere near similar to deal or no deal. So it must be the, as you say, the daytime thing, that aspect of it. Um, But, with deal or no deal, it was three shows a day. Okay, what time did you get in? Um, well, what I remember, I couldn't tell you the exact time, but it was early doors, like maybe nine, could have been eight. 
Really? Like, early doors. I remember once being asleep at the services. I forget what services they were called, but uh, on the M4 out towards Bristol. It was the last services before Bristol. And I remember being there because I was running really early because I always used to like yeah. panic about being late and stuff. Yeah. So um, I remember being half asleep, trying to sleep some more at that services before, because they wouldn't pay for me a hotel, a deal or no deal. And um, They wouldn't pay... No, they wouldn't, no. Would you no. ever do a few when, days when got on, a, on the bounce, time. though? Would you do a few days on the bounce? Um, I think I did that time. I think I did three, yeah. And they yeah. didn't get you a hotel? No, I paid for a hotel for, for I think, two <sighs> days. But the, for the first day of it, I hadn't stayed there the night before. Um, so, yeah, I remember, so, so I remember it was very early doors. Okay, so you turn up. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a little estate, like an industrial estate. It's not the thing. prettiest of places, is it? No, it looks like it Honestly, shouldn't be. Honestly, why do I love all this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I fucking it's, it's, There's a, something about the lack of glamour I'm always always, yeah. always surprised yeah. at, how how mundane it all is. You know, yeah. it's, like, it's all just mainly car parks and square buildings, isn't it, really? It's just there's, shit. There's, there's no way you would have thought just driving past that whole area. And Noel's in there somewhere. Well, that, that a TV show was there. <laughs> yeah. that it would be like a flagship TV show. Yeah. There was nothing outside it to give off any clue. No. But, no. Um, you know. So you walk in. Yeah. Morning sort of in, morning. Swagger. It's more of a swagger, really. Must <laughs> 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 be on my Don't phone. blame you. On my phone. Very cocksure of myself. Yeah. <laughs> So you, I, sort of know your... I, him, I spend 10 minutes trying to get him to pull it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't know if you need a warm up with this yeah. size. There's no it. one here. There's no one actually here. <laughs> what size I sort of is want to know what yeah. you... Sorry, go on. What is the size I of the I just want to go one step at a time, Joe. <laughs> Please don't jump Okay, ahead. so what's the corridor like? <laughs> what's the what's front the door one? like? <laughs> Honestly, it's nearly that. What's the that. carpet like? It's like a bog standard <laughs> office block. Is mate. there a smell? Is there a <laughs> smell? Say that. Do you know where Noel is at that point? <laughs> Has Noel arrived? When will Noel <laughs> arrive? <laughs> but seriously... <laughs> Do you ever would say would his car be in the car park? How shiny you? was Noel's car? Did he drive himself? I don't see that. I I I think maybe did he did drive it himself perhaps. What's that? A lot of missed that. Noel did drive himself. I, I think maybe he did. I've got a, 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 I had a memory then of seeing him driving out of there himself in like a four by four. I, I've off. got soft top in my head. That's all well and good, and but there, how then. long is this corridor? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I'm interested in your day. In no, at the same you. time, thank interested you, in the uh, the workings of uh, the game show. Yeah. So you walk down the corridor. Did someone meet? Hi. <laughs> I wasn't even. I don't remember there being a corridor. I, rem I remember it being wow. like. Uh, <laughs> I remember it being a door in a door. Okay. You know, yeah. like, in fact, so like, <laughs> at this rate, is this is going to take four days if we're describing <laughs> the door and then a door. <laughs> we're not going to do every footstep in fucking class. You know, like, you know, like the, the Ghostbusters firehouse, you know, at the front of the Ghostbusters firehouse where there's a door, yeah. a bigger yeah, yeah. door. Oh, okay. I remember like that. We're not even That's in right. the building at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So does someone meet you? So hi, hello, Ian. Uh, can I get your the, Well, the first, the first day they did, but not after that. So, yeah. So I went through the door in a door, David. You can imagine such a thing. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And then, handle, and then was handle. a <laughs> Yes. And I was immediately where I walked into behind where the audience were. It was like you, you were immediately. See? Straight See, in. you wouldn't have got this gold if you so, hadn't been... So is that like a stage door, then? That's not the front door bit, then? No, I Behind guess the curtain, it's just the door <laughs> out to the car park. <laughs> so be, so be behind the audience, Ian's not behind door. the door. <laughs> behind the audience, yeah. No one wouldn't come So when Joe that. did it, no, you wouldn't have done, because you'd have been on the set, so you would have come in the other side. Yeah, because I remember like an office bit with like rooms and like, where we sort of sat, like, which we say, yeah. the green room, which yeah. was sort of... I've no doubt it was lovely, but honestly, it was a day yeah. out. It was like being at Ascot. 
So that, yeah. that little audience you saw in the studio, be, there's a curtain behind them. Behind that is, is the door <laughs> yeah. to, the, to so, the car park. So if you're looking <laughs> at the so audience, crazy. David, right? Did you do see that in reverse shots? Yeah. Quite a lot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> see you exiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See you moving the curtain and fucking off. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, yeah. can you just wait a minute, mate? We're, we're in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> But I heard that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In all my warm ups, I heard that a lot. <laughs> you fucking Trying to make a TV program here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've got your three tiers, David. Yeah. Left, middle, right. Yeah. And um, between each of them was a little walkway. Yeah. Which would take you round the back, mm-hmm. any of them, or off to the left and the right. I think I know. Mm-hmm. I can and as, as you're looking at it, the one that's on the left, the stage, yeah. behind that were the camera ops and all the screens and stuff where they were calling shots and things. I mean, they were calling shots of the gallery, but they, they were all there, plus a headphone with a banker on it. Do you know what? While you're saying this, my willy's going like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, diagonal? To the side. <laughs> It's moving to the left. Ah, give me more. <laughs> so that was behind the left, the left bleacher. Was it right? Was? So, how many people in that audience? I'm going to go for say thirty, about hundred. I'd say fifty. I, I think it was more, you know, but I, I, can't, I can't rightly remember. I, I never counted. It, them. It's all a. No. It's, it's a black room. Isn't it wasn't going to get pulled. <laughs> no, it's that, this is happening three times. Yeah. <laughs> How big, so, you, you look, I'm looking at the audience. It's quite so a small around, studio, isn't it? Yeah, how big's that studio? Small. Is it? Yeah, I, I think it's shot in such a way as to make it seem slightly bigger. Looks great, yeah. But it's, yeah. All, it's all black yeah. curtains and all that, so you don't really know that. Yeah. You know that one we did our pilot thing in, David? Yeah. It's nowhere near as big as that. Like, a, I'd say about really? a fifth of that size. It's small. It's because it's like a small... Dude, why am I giving you this detail like it's important? Because I love it. I know, but it's bizarre. <laughs> I'm why telling you the size that? of a fucking studio in detail, and I'm like, why am I doing What is fucking going on? <laughs> I remember the set part of it feeling quite substantial. The what bits are in? The actual set. Yeah. I remember feeling quite quite vast. Right. Perhaps by comparison. It was, it was very much spread out, and there was the walkway down the back as well. Yeah. I definitely ran round that set, high fiving contestants. Definitely, did you? Did yeah, did you? Wow. I definitely did the caterpillar on that set. Sure, did you on the floor. <laughs> yeah, God, you must have felt so confident and sort of loose. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Isn't there? Isn't there a danger though, Ian? That we're in, you know, in warm up at any time they can say stop. So you could have been mid caterpillar, <laughs> and they said, "Okay, thanks, Ian," and you would have had to pick yourself up off the floor. I I don't do that as a within my warm up stuff. So I, I mean, I think most warm ups probably do that. Yeah, what caterpillar? Where you, no, where you into. <laughs> You intentionally yeah. start something that you know knowing. Is oh, right. And then, and then that way you you become one of them in the audience. Oh yeah, you're yes. sort of the victim, aren't you? You're the Yeah, you're then like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah, go, yeah, go yeah. Go yeah. Television yeah. program. What do yeah. you do you have, sorry, I know I'm jumping here, David. We'll get back to the logistics in a minute. I'll just sort of question my <laughs> when you're going into warm up, especially if you're doing three, like technical yeah. things can go wrong. So you could have to cover a fuckload of time. Right, how yeah. you, that must be so nerve wracking because you go, especially on sitcoms and stuff. You might be out there for like an hour and a half or something if it's going, if things are going wrong. Surely you're shitting yourself. N- not in one go, you will be up for an hour and a half. Well, no, that seems like a long. Well, yeah. but, but bits and bobs over a, over a night, you could be up there for an hour and a half. Right? How bad have your pilots gone? Well, <laughs> if you say that, none of them have been made. <laughs> <laughs> you do the math. <laughs> I, I never thought of it like that at all. Really? I, I never That's thought exactly. It wasn't think. like you know when you do gigs, some like comparing a gig, and maybe the like headline acts hadn't arrived yet, and some promoters would go, "Well, just go on and we'll wave you when they're here." Ugh. And it's like yeah. that. That is, I, I mean, I ultimately started refusing to do that. 
because that was like, no, I'm not, I'm not just going treading water until yeah. you click your fingers because yeah. they've not arrived on time. Yeah. Um, but, so that was more stressful. The warm up is essentially it, that, isn't it? You go on until we're yeah. ready to, isn't it? No, no, because because you you would have the luxury within a warm up. I think it's a misconception that you've got to keep the ball in the air all the time. Oh. You, you don't have to. You can you can be quiet. You know, you can be a bit reflective, or you can just go and watch like the audience are watching. You know, go and lean on the. Oh really? And and, and just sort of just chat, yeah. just quite quietly, just into the mic. Well, I, I definitely, I I think I think there was a perception of me potentially that I was really fly by night in terms of what I was doing. That I was properly a loose cannon sometimes even, you know, just like integrate myself with the audience, take the piss out of the show and all the rest of it, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it'd be have, have an air of anarchy to it without being ridiculous. I don't mean Phil K sort of anarchy, you know what I mean? Mm. Just an air of knockabout, which I think sometimes people didn't like, well, I know that sometimes people didn't like that at all. Deal on ideal is a good case in point. But... Um, I always, I, I have, I have two things going on with that where I think, well, that means that I did that really well, that yeah. I, I was very convincing in what I was trying to give off, Yeah, but I would, uh, defend myself vociferously about that. I wasn't really concentrating that I wasn't really mm. thinking what was good for the show. Right. Only, right. I only tended to take shows for warm up that I liked. So people that yep. I liked, um, I turned quite a few down that I was like, I don't, I can't sell this show for you. Um, right, right, I see. No, like working with Lee on Not Going Out was like, I would defer to Lee in that studio. Like, no, not a floor manager, not a director, no, not a producer, to Lee. I would make sure that I knew that Lee was happy with what was going on mm. and, and keep in touch with him all night as well. Mm. It's her Miranda, which I was ultimately sacked off. But in Miranda, I'd known Miranda since back in 99 in Edinburgh. And it was her first, it was her proper big break, really, the sitcom, even though she'd done lots of stuff. Yeah. Um, and she was nervous about it. And there was an air of, oh, well, little I want this work. So I absolutely had her back in that. And then it was only later series where other people join in. And then, yeah, you know, it becomes, you, you sort of want to go, no, I know what I'm doing because we've done it yeah. before and I know exactly how to play this. And I know I'm on the journey with the audience as well. So I know where we're up to. You've just been parachuted in as, as whatever your job is. Right. Mm. I haven't thought about your responsibility of warm-ups. Oh, I have. I, I think about it all the time. I just, I couldn't imagine doing it. Genuinely, like, it's such a, it seems so scary to me. Like, because it's just cold. It's like nothing's happened, and you're the first. You're the first person to deal with the show, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you'd be able to do it now. So, so I think you know. In, mm. in ter- no, no. In terms of what you bring with you, because people know you now. They, you know, they they get the thing. So right. when you started off, you wouldn't have been able to because they'd have been like they'd have just thought you were genuinely awkward and out of your depth and do, do you know what I mean but, they would have fared to them they would have been right in this yeah <laughs> but that's your you know that's your actual sword isn't it you know so that's the thing yeah. that you know your your every man quality is your sword not to I don't want to dissect your personality <laughs> it is your real life too much <laughs> right, carry on we've got an hour or so <laughs> can't we go back to David <laughs> can't we talk about some issues with David <laughs> if you're backstage yeah. slowly putting on a lime green wig <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah putting his rubber willy yeah. in his pocket yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh heavens oh heavens <laughs> <laughs> that was funny <laughs> so Ian yes mate at what point do you see Noel you've got in at <laughs> and nine yeah and what is your relationship with Noel yeah what point do you see him and what's your relationship yeah what's the banter Noel? I usually saw Noel nine times out of ten when he walked out that was the first time I saw him. Nine times out of ten. Oh, so you you wouldn't see him pre? Well, there was no dress. You know, there was no sort of like. I guess with the sitcom or whatever, you'd you'd often get there early because they'd be doing a, a dress rehearsal and camera rehearsal and stuff. So you'd see everyone. And Noel yeah. would just was be on. It doesn't need there. anything. He's just wallet. Now, hey, I tell you what, that's true though. That is right. true. bloody it, yeah. Uh, did you watch him and go, "This guy knows his stuff"? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I was talking to someone about it. it was he? He 
creates the drama, doesn't he? He creates the sort of tension with the bankers. It's because we take take that out. There's fuck all to that show. <laughs> 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 Had you and Naomi in the apartment. <laughs> yeah. But it's true though. That show is nothing without the tension and the drama that he. Yeah. Oh. Consummate without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, certainly. So what what skills would he bring to that job? Where you go, yeah, wow, look at that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's why Noel's where Noel is. Yeah, what would he do? <laughs> like, he go, yeah, fair play. Right. I have this thing where, again, I, I'm bringing it back to me because I'm having to in terms of how I look at things. So I one of the problems with my career in, in performing was always that I couldn't, I couldn't suspend the facade for long enough. No, yeah. So, so I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'm people. With you, some. <laughs> but, but, but you know what I mean? People that would go. Yeah, just ignore I'm them. with you all just the ignore time. Them. Or yeah. Yeah. just carry on. Just do what you're meant to do. I wouldn't. Right. I couldn't do it. So I couldn't pretend to be. A, you have to be truthful in. No, it's not that. I'm not. Uh, it is. This is not a boast, David. No, I'm not saying it's a boast. I just think. No, but I couldn't. So what? So when you what, what what couldn't you do? You couldn't the facade of uh, you're not doing my editing or something like that. Do you mean? Yeah, like lovely to be here tonight. <laughs> oh, what when you're actually doing the job? Like like when you when you're doing because that's when you're doing the actual warm up rather than sort of backstage. Any time, any time on stage, any time right. on stage, I could not be anything but what I believe to be my authentic self. So if my authentic self was. Um, wanting to take the piss out of something, then I would take the piss out of something. Mm. If I felt that the show needed me to be in certain tones, I would adjust my tone accordingly. But I couldn't just, I couldn't do the show busy thing at all. Just couldn't do it. Right. And Noel can do it. So he can come out there almost like he's blinkered and just do the right words and just do the right, way of being on the stage. Yeah. You're an interesting case in point here, Joe, because I don't think, I think you, you fall somewhere very much in between it and that's been your success. You know what I mean? That your success has been that you also don't do it. You don't, you're not, you're not Jimmy. So you're not, you don't know what Jimmy does. And even Jimmy. Yeah. You know, well, over the years has dropped quite a bit of that. So you see yeah, more yeah. of him. He, he is, yeah, he's showbiz, and that, that it's sort of good if someone is showbiz, then you can do the complete opposite. But if yes, exactly, if that, you yeah. had to be in the middle, if I had to be in the middle being showbiz, I couldn't do it. No, yeah, absolutely not. It's just, but 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 I suspect that you wouldn't, you know, in 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 a TV recording, if somebody really upset you and and was really unfair or and really rude, that you would just swallow that down, maybe. Whereas yeah. I. would yeah, I'd I not be able to let that go all night. I'd right. be like, that, "That's really rude. That's not fair. What you've just done." I, I really want to see you as the host of Strictly now. I'm really <laughs> <laughs> just seeing that. This go uh, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the thing. That's what's in my head, or was back then. That was what was in my head most of the time. <laughs> 